Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel and I'm going to be answering question number seven from the June 2018 Edexcel Core Mathematics C4 um, paper and this corresponds now to the new P4 International A-Level syllabus. Uh, this question on vectors it says the point A with coordinates minus 372 lies on line 1. The point B also lies on the line 1. Given that A to B is 4 minus 6, 2, find the coordinates of point B. Okay, so let's have a, let me just draw a, a line. I'm going to call this line, line 1. The point A and the point B are both on line 1. <clears throat> let's say this is the point O, the origin. Okay, um, then what I can say is, what we have here is, um, a to B is 4 minus 6, 2. So this is a vector. You can say 4 minus 6 and 2. Let me write that a bit neater. 4 minus 6 and 2. From A to B. Um, the vector from O to A. Let's put this on this side here a bit. The vector from O to A. Because we know the coordinates of A are th minus 3, 7, 2. That means the vector that takes us from O to A must be the vector minus 3, 7, 2. Because that, that's a position vector. The position vector means um, the position vector means in relation to the origin. So if the coordinates of A are minus 3, 7, 2, then the position vector from O to A must also be, well, can be given as by the vector minus 3, 7, 2. Okay, the question says find the vector or find the coordinates of the point B. So we need to find the coordinates of the point B. That's what we need to find. Now, the coordinates of the point B will be given when we find the position vector of B, which means the vector from O to B. And we can see very clearly here that if I go from O to A, and then from A to B, which I have both of them, I will be able to find what O to B is. So I can say O to B is equal to O to A plus A to B. Okay, so O to A we know is minus 3, 7, 2. And a to b is 4, 4 minus 6 and 2. So the vector o to b is minus 3 plus 4, which is 1. 7 minus 6, which is also 1. And 2 plus 2, which is 4. So that means the coordinates of the point b are 1, 1, 4. And there's the answer to 7, part a. Okay, now we're going to move on to part b. Okay, now for part b, there's the point p has coordinates 9, 1, 8. Find the cosine of the angle PAB, giving your answer as a simplified cert. Okay, so this is what we found so far. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, let's call point B um, a point, say, over here somewhere. We don't know exactly where it is, um, but I'm just going to say, let's call this point B. All right? Um, now, I know that um, the coordinates of point B are 9, 1, 8. So if that means from O to P, is the vector 918. So I can say O to P is the vector 918. They're asking us to find the cosine of the angle PAB. PAB. So they want us to find the cosine of this angle over here. Let me just draw it in a different color. So it looks slightly different. Okay, so I need to find the angle P A. Doesn't want to meet up there. B. Okay, I need to find this angle over here. Let me call it theta. PAB. That's the angle I need to find. Okay, so angle PAB, I've called it theta here, right? That's the angle we need to find. In order to find that angle, I need to use this formula that cosine of an angle is given by A dot B, the dot product of the vectors, which um, the lines that make the, the vectors that make the angle over the magnitude of the vectors, the product of the magnitude of the vectors. So if you want to find the angle between two vectors, you need the product of those two vectors, um, the dot product of those two vectors, uh, divided by the product of their magnitudes. Okay, now, to find the angle, um, this angle, PAB, I need to find um, the angle such that these two vectors are, are laying tail to tail. PAB would be this angle over here, when these are lying tail to tail, okay? So they have to be tail to tail like this, okay? If I if I do like uh, 
A, P and A, B, that's what I need. If I do P, A and A, B, then I won't find the angle P, A, B. I'll find the angle from this side. Okay, the, the angle on that side, if you extend this. Okay, I'll, I'll find this angle here. I don't want this angle here. I want P, A, B. So I need to put these as A, P and A, B. So I need to find A, P and A, B. Now I know what A, B is. Let's see what A, P is. Now A to P, again, if I join this to that, um, make this in a dotted line. If I join this to B, okay, um, what am I doing here? I'm finding A to P. Okay, actually, I don't need that. What am I doing? Yeah, A to P. So A to P is like if I go from A to O plus O to P. So it's like A to O plus A to P. So A to O is like minus O A. So it's, you can say it's O P minus O A. O to P minus O to A. So I can say that A to P, therefore, is going to be, um, I know what O to P is. It's 918 minus O to A, which is minus 372. That gives me 9 minus minus 3, which is 12. 1 minus 7, which is negative 6. And 8 minus 2, which is positive 6. Okay, so I know my vector A to P is 12 minus 6 and 6. And I know my vector um, A to B is given in the question as 4 minus 6, 2. Okay, so I can now find the angle between them. To find the angle between them, you need the magnitude of the two vectors. So, I mean, well, let's call this vector A and call this vector B. So we could say the dot product first, A dot B is going to be 12 minus 6 and 6 dot product with 4 minus 6 and 2. Okay, that's going to give me 12 times 4, which is 48, plus 6 times 6, which is 36, plus 6 times 2, which is 12. Okay, that's 60, that's going to be 96. That's going to be 96. Okay, yeah, 12 minus 6, 6. 4 minus 6, 2, that's 48, plus 36, plus 12, that's that's going to be 48 plus 12 is 60, 60 plus 36 is 96, so that's A dot B, that's that part. Now I need the magnitude of the vector A, which is the magnitude of the first vector here, so that's going to be the square root of uh, 12 squared plus 6 squared plus 6 squared, and the magnitude of B, which would be the magnitude of this vector, which would be the square root of 4 squared plus 6 squared plus 2 squared. Let's work out what these are going to be. Okay, let's just uh, multiply this to make sure. 12 times 4 plus 6 times 6. Both negatives will cancel out. Um, plus 6 times 2. Okay, that gives me 96. That's correct. Now we've got the square root of 12 squared, which is 144. Let me use my mouse for this. This, this pen just double clicks everything. So I'm going to have 12 squared plus 6 squared plus 6 squared. That gives me the square root of, well, it gives me 6 times root 6. That's 6 times root 6. Then I got 4 squared plus 6 squared plus 2 squared. That's going to be a 2 squared. And that's going to be a 6 squared. And that's going to be a 4 squared. 4 squared, so that gives me 2 root 14. Okay, so that's 2 times root 14. So now I can say that the cosine of the angle I need is 96 over 6 root 6 times 2 root 14. They want the exact value of cosine theta. They don't want the angle, they want the cosine of the angle. Okay, so let me just, that's 96 over 12. We'll simplify that a bit. 96 over 12. Let's see if this gives us if this gives us a simplified answer. We can just use the calculator. If not, we have to modify a bit or simplify ourselves. So 96 over 6 times root 6 times 2 root 14. 14. Okay, that's good. It gives us 4 root 21 over 21. So we can say cosine of theta is 4 times root 21 over 21 and there's the answer for part b okay now moving on to part c 
Okay, now 7C says find the exact area of triangle PAB, giving your answer in its simplest form. So the triangle PAB is basically this triangle over here, PAB. Okay, and we already found the angle, or the cosine of the angle theta, and we know the magnitude of AB and the magnitude of AP. So we can use the formula that the area of a triangle is given by a half times AB sine theta, which is two sides and the angle between them is the theta. So we need to find the exact area of this triangle. So I need to find sine theta in its exact form. If I find the inverse cosine, or if I find the inverse cosine of this to find the angle theta, and then find the sine of that angle, it won't give me an exact answer. And we can, we can show that, all right? So if I take this value, which we found for cosine theta, and I find the actual angle, so I say inverse of cosine of that answer, it's going to give me an angle, and if I press the sine of that angle, that's not an exact answer. So this won't lead me to an exact value. So I need the exact area. So I need to find a way of finding the exact value of the sine of theta. So what I can do is I can just like draw a right angle triangle. Okay, so I can just draw a little right angle triangle. Oops, what happened there? All right, so I'll draw a, a little right angle triangle here. And I'll say, okay, let's say this is the right angle and say this is theta. The cosine of theta is 4 root 21 over 21. So this would be the adjacent side and this would be the hypotenuse. So I can find this opposite side by using Pythagoras. So x will be the square root of 21 squared minus the square of 4, 4 times root 21, which will be 16 times 21. Okay, so I can find what x is. I can find what this length is in its exact form. So I have 21 squared, so I have the square root of 21 squared. 21 squared minus, and I'm going to have 16 times 21. That gives us the square root of 105. Okay, so that's the x. Therefore, we can say the sine of theta is equal to the square root of 105 divided by the hypotenuse, which is 21. So that's the exact value of the sine of the angle. Okay, that's the exact value of the sine of the angle. All right, so now... I can now find my area. The area is a half times a, a would be the magnitude of this vector, so it's going to be half times 2 root 14 times the magnitude of the other side, which is 6 root 6, times the sine of the angle, which is the square root of 105 over 21. Okay, this 2 will cancel with the 2. Uh, 3 goes into 6. 2 times into root 21, into 21, 7 times. Okay, so you're left with basically something like this. You've got 2 over 7 times root 6 times 105. Let's see if that gives us an answer. Let's see if it gives us an answer from the beginning. Let's just see what happens when we do this. A half. If it gives us an exact answer, we could just done that right from the beginning. Times 2 root 14. times 6 root 6 and then times 105 over 21 root 105 over 21 oops I need to sort that out I'll put the fraction first root 105 over 21 105 over 21 Okay, Okay, that gives us 12 root 5. We could have done that straight away. Okay, so basically you end up with 12 root 5 as your answer, and that is units squared. There we have the answer for part um, C. So putting that in your calculator will give you the answer straight away without having to do any of that calculation there. So that's the answer for part C, the exact area of triangle PAB. Um, in its simplest form, it says exact, that's why I have to be in, in root form, in third form. Okay, so there's part C, now for part D. Now part D says the line L2 passes through the point P and is parallel to the line L1. Find a vector equation for the line L2. Now, if you remember, 
A and B were both on line one. So you had line one, you had A and B were both on line one. Okay, so this was line one. And now if line one and line two are parallel, then the direction of line two is also four minus six, two. That would be a, that would be a vector in the direction of line one. Okay, or line two, if line two is parallel to it, have the same direction. And we also know that the point P lies on the line um, L2. So a vector equation for the line L2 will be given by the coordinates of any point on the line L2, which is 918, that's a point on the line L2, okay, plus some scalar times, okay, direction of the line L2. So I could use 4 minus 6, 2. I could even use 2 minus 3, 1 if I wanted to. Any vector that's parallel to this. So I'll just use 4 minus 6, 2. No problem. If I used 2 minus 3, 1, that'd also be fine. It doesn't matter. Okay, so you need the position vector of a point on the line, and you need to have the direction of the line. So for the line 2, this, this is the point P on the line. So from O to P will take you to the line, and then you go along the line using this direction vector. Okay, so that's as simple as that. Part D, just you need the position vector of a point on the line, and you need the direction of the line. And both of those things were given to us in the question earlier. Okay, so now I'm going to go through part E. Okay, in fact, the video has got quite long now. So what I'll do is I'll do part E in the next video. Okay, and um, that will be probably more sensible. It's got quite long now. So I'll do part the, the next part of the video on part on um, the um, sorry part D on the next video part E on the next video sorry um, now so you'll be able to find other questions from this particular paper by clicking on the link here okay the link that should show up here other questions from this topic on vectors and the link here I'll put a link to part E also over here somewhere you can subscribe to my channel from here and you could um, you know, find another P4 style paper on the top, the card at the top. Okay, so if you want to see part E, at the end of the video, you'll see this little link on this side over here, which will take you to part E. Okay, thank you for watching and see you soon.